What's the motherfucking deal, Sauce Nation? Welcome to Sauce Sports. If you're not familiar with Sauce Sports, Sauce Sports is a Houston, Texas homer network. Uh, we're jumping off a little bit late, but I mean, we're talking all sports and all in Houston. forgot that part. Uh, we're jumping off a little bit late, but we're going to get into it, man. We're going to talk about the last preseason game. We ain't going a full hour today because, you know, most of the notable names going to be out of it. We gave a little bit of a preview yesterday, and so we're just going to kind of recap before the game. We will have a post-game show immediately after the game, so make sure y'all are tuning in for that. Um, and shit, you know, it is what it is, man. We got in the mix this evening with us in the round, and then we're going to get down. You got your boy Third Coast Sports TV winking the building. You got your boy Wise in the midst. Man, it's that boy Wise. Look, we finna uh, we gonna sing Happy Birthday to Wise at the end of the stream. We gonna we gonna pull out a birthday cake and all that good stuff, man. So you know it's the Wise Man birthday. So shout out to Wise Man. Happy Birthday to Wise. Uh, another year older, another year wiser, man. You know the Wise Man with the plan. Um, so like I said, we got to talk about the most important topic. More important in the game, more important than who getting cut, more important than all that shit. And that is who is in the motherfucking roll call this evening. And if you don't know about the roll call, the roll call is you, Sauce Nation. So if you are from the city, let me put the thing back on. I got it sitting sideways. If you are from the city, man, shout out your side with pride. If you're not from the city, let us know where to send a little bit of that digital love, man. Because we know Sauce Nation of all flavors, colors, creeds, nationalities, areas, locations, all that good shit. So wherever you are, you know, let us know so we can send a little bit of that love. We're going to get into what to look for tonight, and uh, we're going to just talk about a couple of things. I said, I'm over here floating and shit. Let me, let me clean myself up. Y'all can tell I wasn't all the way ready for the thing. But um, let's see we got in the motherfucking roll call tonight, man. We're going we to show some love. We got guys the juice up in there flipping real early. Yeah, make sure y'all flip that sauce. Tomorrow will be the last day, so whoever has the most sauce at midnight tomorrow will be getting the fresh sauce sports merch. Even though I could almost go ahead and put a stamp on the winner, y'all can always try uh, HTX Savage, what's the motherfucking deal? Hector Rodriguez, Voodoo Child, what's the motherfucking deal? Uh, actually, I'll give me one, one quick second here. Man, I apologize about that. Look, usually I don't ever have my damn, uh, I don't ever had a damn cable box hooked up because I don't ever watch no fucking TV. And so I had to actually make sure it was on before the game. And I forgot that bitch was even on. Like, I show you how much I don't pay no attention to it. But let's get back to the roll call, see what we got in here, and then we're going to dive into it. Um, where was it? HTX Savage, Hector Rodriguez, Voodoo Child. What? what? Was, was Voodoo Child in here before Miss Voodoo C? He must, he must have held it down. He must have cheated somehow. Miss Voodoo C, what's the motherfucking deal? Christian Covington. Uh, you know, you ain't talk about that boy like that, man. He's just a video game character. Uh, Brian Cushion, Demarcus Johnson, three three five. What's the motherfucking deal? Uh, Ricky Rodriguez, Baylor Rios. What's the motherfucking deal? Heidi Flower Plants, <laughs> Flower Plants. Yeah, that, that's how it works. Flower Pants, Klein Dentist. Uh, let's see, Houston B. What's the motherfucking deal? Berkeley Boss. What's the motherfucking deal? Uh, still waiting for greatness. What's the motherfucking deal? Let's see, let's see, Zach, Zach. Is a Dallas Cowboys fan going to lose tonight? Hereda. Orlando Longoria, what's the motherfucking deal? Shelby GT02. All right. Uh, the nigga who could finally got that right. David Pritchard, what's the motherfucking deal? Always good to see you, man. Sandy Ravage, DeMarcus Johnson, Wise Citizens in the mix. Celebrating his birthday with the sauce. OG77013, Eastside represent Wallaceville. Keeping it trill already. Um... Let's see. <laughs> look, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, uh, less, less cautious with the, uh, with the mute buttons. Even everybody, make sure they don't get muted. I've been better with it the last couple of days. Y'all can admit that. I've been muting myself and shit though. Cruzito, that cool Lambert, what's the motherfucking deal? Seth Clark, what's the motherfucking deal? Let's get into it, man. Let's let's just kind of talk about it. Uh, what's going down? Like I say, it'll be a short sauce. We'll give. Make sure y'all got time to catch the game and everything. But uh, a little bit of good news coming out of Texas camp that they did extend the boy Greg Manx until 2020, which I thought was a solid move. Now, if they if they're if they're making some deals and, and and trying to sign some folks, I'm hoping a couple other deals get done because you've seen a lot of action going on around the league, a lot of uh, moves being made, you know. And again, we talked we talked pretty in depth about the money that you know Aaron Rodgers got and all that other good stuff. Um, how do you feel like that that move? How does that benefit the Texans 
in the long term. We'll start with Wise, then we'll get on Winko now. Wise, what are your thoughts about the Texans extending Greg Manx until 2020? I mean, you have a young guy in Greg, Greg Maines who can be a backup and a fill-in at center. Uh, we know Nick Martin dealt with some injuries in the past. So, I mean, it's good to have a backup option for these next couple of years. He's a guy that knows his offense in and out because, I mean, he started here since he was a, a sixth-round pick. or Yeah, he was sixth-round pick, right? I think something like that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, from Toledo. So, I mean. This guy is going to be here for a while. He has that chemistry with Watson. Uh, he can play guard as well. He can fill in that guard. He did uh, mess up a few times last season. But, I mean, he's one of the better quality linemen that we have. So, it's good to extend him, especially on a cheap contract, knowing that we'll have a back, a viable um, backup option for the future. Uh, excuse me. Wink, your thoughts on the Texans extending Greg Manx and what kind of asset can he be for this team in the future? Uh, yeah, I agree. It's a solid move. Um, he's probably the best player um, that we have at any depth on the O-line. Um, he would be a good fill-in if uh, anything happens to um, Nick more than any portion of the season, which I doubt would happen. But it's good to have a backup plan, and I think he fills the, um, the role very well. All right, all right. Now, kind of looking into it, man, this is – the final chance for a lot of guys, you know, some guys who may have been uh, undrafted, had a chance to participate in camp. Some guys may have intentionally been brought in as camp bodies, but, you know, may have flashed a little bit, may have shown some potential for some other teams because it's not just the Texans that they're performing for tonight. I mean, they're performing for the entire NFL. You know, there's lots of scouts, lots of other GMs who will be watching all of these games. And the Texans will have scouts and have guys watching other games to see, you know, what positions of need look like they can be serviceable guys that could possibly be projects. You know, the Texans have a good position on the waiver wire as far as some of these guys when they get waived, and I think that's going to be an asset in the long run. Um, I mean, we kind of briefly mentioned it last night, but I want to know your thoughts on one specific player. Who who needs to stand out tonight, not just to be a member of this Texans organization, but this could possibly be their last chance, you know, playing in the NFL. Who who needs to have a good show tonight? We'll start with uh, Wink, and then we'll get Wise's thoughts on that one. Like it didn't work out for him in any way, and like you can see it from like his timeline and shit. Like he looks defeated and shit. So I say Tyler Irvin. With the mute, and I caught I muted the beginning part of it. See, Berkeley boss, goddamn you! I'm gonna uh, take some sauce out your sauce accounts because you spoke that shit into existence. You gave me the bad juju and all that other shit. Uh, they didn't catch the beginning of your comment on that one. Uh, so as far as who you were speaking on, who has this might be their their borderline chance in the NFL. Oh, I was saying uh, Tyler Irvin. If we taking it to if if that's the criteria for which we judge this on, like I think like he has to take this shit. Like to a whole nother level this game just to get noticed what somebody another team can say because it won't be the Texans. The Texans have done everything they could for this man and he hasn't shown up. So uh he could fear he could very well be showcasing what he can do with somebody else, but it's just unfortunate he won't have the chance to do it on this team because he had the injuries and all kind of other shit. Why is your thoughts on who potentially may be this may be their last chance to audition for an NFL team as a whole? Who do you see on this team that needs to to really have a, put on a showcase tonight? Diversion. Diversion. I mean, this guy's terrible. I don't even want to see him. I don't want to see this guy on the roster. I don't want to see this guy on the practice squad. I don't want to see this guy on the reserves. This guy is terrible. I mean, if he. I guarantee somebody's going to throw a touchdown on this guy tonight. I'm not really sure um, who's Dallas backup quarterback right now, but he's going to attack the version because that's what every backup quarterback does. And I don't think this guy can make it on any NFL roster. Nobody can um, possibly boost his um, talent if Romeo Cornell can't do it. So, 
that's the guy I think that needs to show out tonight. He need to get three interceptions or some something spectacular to make somebody roster. Okay. 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 I can agree with that. Um, he definitely has to stand up. Like I say, you know, he say, but the thing is that if, if anything, you know, that versatility word, they, they like him on special teams. He made special, but as far as a corner, he might be in a corner. This might be his last opportunity. Um, me personally, if I'm talking about somebody, I think, uh, and I might have to go with who Wink kind of mentioned it first, but then he, uh, he said earlier, um, and, but I don't think this will be his last chance in the NFL because I think, you know, the fact that he's actually produced in NFL games may extend his his opportunity. But Steven Anderson does concern me because if you look at the depth chart, they had uh, Pruitt ahead of him. Not, I mean, not just Thomas Aikens and 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 uh, Griffin because those were expected, but the the Michael Pruitt kid who I haven't seen a whole lot of was 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 placed ahead of him. So that's that's very concerning as to what may be going on with him. And then with him being a tweener type of a tight end, there might not be a lot of spaces for him in the NFL. Not be, might not be a lot of teams in the NFL who kind of want to, you know, take that gamble. Maybe he can convert and, and, and be a full-time wide receiver or something. I don't know. But I think it, it, it could be a brink for Steven Anderson. And, of course, I'm a Steven Anderson fan. I like Steven Anderson. I like Mama Anderson, Charlene. She's one of my favorite moms in the NFL. So you know how that goes. But – um, <laughs> let me stop before Buffalo try to run up on the sauce. He could be like, "You talking about my mama, nigga? What you say about my mama?" Uh, but anyway, like I say, you know. But who do you feel like this game, you know, is a is a lock for already? I mean, we know we got a couple of guys that are just gonna be who kind of just need the reps. Um, and then what guy do you feel is kind of in that bubble? And again, you know that that. And I kind of got a couple of names in mind, but the guy that's on that bubble that just needs to have a a strong showing tonight against Dallas to solidify themselves, who maybe can jockey for position, because there's a couple of guys, you know, we know in the back end of a few positions, who needs to have a strong showing tonight to solidify the fact that they're not the last name in whatever particular position that they're in. We'll start with Wise, and then uh, we'll get Wink's thoughts on that one. Um, for the bubble, I'm gonna have to say it's gonna have to be a guy like um. It gotta be one of those outside linebackers. I'm gonna have to say, damn. I don't want to say it, but maybe a Brendan Scarlett might be an upset um let go because we have um. W C M D. What's his name right now? I can't think. My bad. Uh, the kid from A Leaf Taylor. Duke. We got Duke. We got Duke. So, I mean, with Duke, uh, he b- becomes irreplaceable. I mean, irreplaceable. Uh, he's a guy that would be a great grab for other teams. So, I don't know um, if the Texans wanted to keep him. But with Duke um, coming up in his past, rot- passing rotation. So, uh, I think he's going to get more time this season. I think he's going to see time behind Jadavion and a merciless. So, we'll see um, Brennan Scarlett time on the field reduced. So, I think he's a guy that can get cut or who's on a bubble. Um, especially with having Dylan Cole as well. Um, a guy that's a lot, I would say, is Joe Webb because he's great at special teams, and he's a guy that you can just implement and do certain schemes on offense with. And if we did have a like a play where Watson got hit, and you know how they have those stupid rules where you got to sit out one play or if his helmet came off or something like that, he'll be a guy that you can throw in there for one play and run a quick um, – uh, run a quick light screen or something like that. So I think Joe Webb has a lock on this roster. So that's a guy that will make the 53-man roster. Okay, okay. And I do believe that versatility is a asset for him with the fact that he could play a little bit of wide out if it came down to it. Cause we saw those numbers deplete very deep into the, the wide out court yes, last year. And the special teams is a plus too. Uh, shout out to Eastside Hero, man. I appreciate the super saucy, super chat love. So what's the motherfucking deal? Wink. Your thoughts? Who is who is a guy that's kind of borderline, but will be a lock tonight? And then who is somebody who is who is going to be fighting for a position to to I mean to squeeze their way into that that last spot on this roster? Um, the guy they kind of um, just brought up. I don't think a guy like Michael Pruitt is a lock for this team. Um, he hasn't done a whole lot, you know, in these games. I mean, he showed some things here and there, but. I don't think I even he's a guy for a lock to be on this team. It's kind of it's it's kind of hard to really say which direction they're gonna go in because it's the reason why it's gonna be hard is because so many of the players they thought that they had depth wise didn't show up. So it's gonna make it harder in what they value overall. But um, 
me personally, I got. That's too much stuff. Depending Anderson on how they Gonzi, do Braxton, Braxton, I must show you Braxton like I show them scouts a, a, and show you these hands it. talking about. And, um, my T Jones like that. Probably quote. a person on their way out is definitely um Scarlet could Scarlet could get replaced, but I I just don't see it. He could get replaced, but I, I don't see it. It's kinda hard for me to come up with that one. Okay. I'll probably agree with uh with David Pritchard on that. Scarlet, you know, again, like I say, some of these guys that have actually had some game time and Scarlet showed a little bit of flashes last year before he got injured. He may be an asset that you could flip for something else to another team, you know, if you you know, if you kinda of going down to that wire. Um and <laughs> Jay Dizzle look look tell him, tell him, come see me, man. If you if you want that action, look, I was saying nice stuff about his mama, but I'll take her out to a nice seafood dinner, and never call her back, you know what I'm saying? If he really wants them type of problems, you know what I'm saying? But um no, nah, nah, I agree, man. Uh, yeah, a quick interest. I'm glad, Pritchard, I'm glad you mentioned that. I want to know y'all's thoughts. Uh, we, we, we know the talk of, uh, of the NFL, the, probably the biggest mouth in the league at this point in time. And I, I, I honestly used to hate this guy, but it's growing more and more on me every day, uh, even though he is in the division, but he ain't going to be on that team for long because, you know, he even made some little interesting statements about that. But one Jalen Ramsey made a very interesting comment about uh, DeAndre Hopkins. He was talking about his two. They were talking about, you know, who sucks, who doesn't suck. <clears throat> uh, man, Voodoo, you know, you got the versatility, but we'll get on that. Um, but basically, he said, you know, the top two receivers are Antonio Brown and um, – DeAndre Hopkins, but he said when he made a statement about DeAndre Hopkins, basically said the man had 100 uh, quarterbacks and they were all trash. He's like, I could go out there and play uh, quarterback better than the guys that he's had for him. Um, what is that in your opinion? And I mean, this you know, many people are arguably the best cornerback in the league. Many people will say this. You know, so his opinion is much more valid than any of these quote-unquote experts who never get anything right. Hearing something like that coming from Jalen Ramsey, how do you how do you how do you think that should affect how people view DeAndre Hopkins? We saw we just talked about the 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 four letter network and their top one hundred had him as the fourth best receiver, you know. But you're talking about the guy who is again arguably the best cornerback in the game. With his opinion, how do you feel like that that should affect the viewing of one DeAndre Hopkins? It it validates everything we said. I mean. Just everything we said from the beginning of the offseason since last season. I mean, these guys don't these guys for the national national media, they don't watch the Texans games. They watch the highlights. They they just watch they watch the big game highlights. They don't even watch the regular game highlights when you're playing like Colts or somebody like that. So I mean, they don't get to see that this guy's going with a Brian Hoyer, with a Ryan Fitzpatrick, with a seventeen, with a um Matt Liner. Dudes like this, I mean, come on, guy. I mean, the Texans, we had a democracy for a quarterback for a long time, and it's been terrible. It's been bad. We finally got a blessing. He did it with four quarterbacks in the last, I think, 12 quarterbacks the last three seasons or something like that because we had so many injuries. We was just plugging guys in. And for that to come from Jalen Ramsey, one of the best corners who's seen some of the best um, receivers. He's been against um, Antonio Holmes. I mean, Anto- um, Antonio Brown. He's been against DeAndre Hopkins. He's been against T.Y. Hilton. And he's been against all these top guys, so he knows who's the best. And that's the same thing that happened in the NBA. Like, the national media said James Harden's not the best player, but the, the players voted him MVP that season. But they still gave Curry the MVP. So it's just a hatred towards the city. It's a hatred towards this organization that the media has. But... Um, we all know that DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in the game, and he should go out there and prove it this season since guys still think he's not the best receiver. Your thoughts on that one, Wink? Man, I feel the same way, man. Um, this man's been proving it and proving it, and he's going to end up proving it, you know, knocking a little rust off, you know, you know, Looking shaky on a couple of things, you know, but the old line and shit like that was holding him. It's a couple of things he's gonna go back to the drawing for, fix that shit real quick, and don't do it again. You know what I'm saying? That's just the type of player we got. You know, he can make a mistake, move past it, and get even better on the next drive, right when you need him to make a play. You know what I'm saying? He's he's just gifted like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's good to finally have 
a quarterback that can have that type of potential on this football team. Too we much know we've never had that. Hopkins is the worst receiver. And, um, Keep fueling you know, him. Um, you know, it's a shame that really people think like we overhyping Watson. No, no, no it's not because it's not a fluke. The best players in the country all had something to say about Super Bowl champions had things to say about Deshaun Watson, man. Like, the dude is special. You can sit here and try to act like the dude ain't special. The dude is special. He makes shit happen. He was doing it against the top defenses. The top players are talking about him repeatedly. The, it's always the top players. Like Michael Bennett, he's saying it. Then you got Earl Thomas, he's saying it. Then you got Russell Wilson. Then you got Patrick Peterson, who gave him respect all game, even when they were talking what he was talking about. Jerome, I managed, I caught him with my fingertips. And all of that little shit like that. Like Patrick Peterson, like everybody respects fucking, they respect him, man. Like at the end of the day. They can act like this. Wink. Nobody Next can act time like he Smith can go on, on a damn TV show when he out of the league down. And we saw what happened to him on national TV. You know what I'm saying? So you can sit here and try to act like dudes. The dudes is not worrying about Odell because dudes been new. They could get an Odell head. They ain't never seen that happen to DeAndre Hopkins. So how in the hell is he going to sit here and say who's a better receiver when you can get in his head mentally? You got to say is the magic word. And, it, and that magic word sets him off for a particular reason. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but Voodoo Man, my thing with this is, like, no, I'm not saying that that Webb, the love for Webb, like I want Webb to be a, a number two because I definitely feel like Whedon is a, a better quarterback. If we're talking about straight-up quarterbacking. Uh, Whedon has been more accurate throughout the season. Re- Whedon has been uh, better as far as connecting with his targets. But the thing that you've seen from Webb is the fact that he can extend the play, the mobility – you know, uh, a budget to Sean Watson. And uh, appreciate the love, Ashmel and Voodoo Child for the uh, and for the uh, Super Chat, Super Saucy Love. What you got there, uh, Wayne? Man, to add on what you're saying, we knowing how they looking with the first team. They ain't not even playing with the first team. Honestly, when we had a chance to play with the first team offense, we saw what he could do. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't have any issues moving up in and up, in out of the pocket or anything like that. And I honestly believe if Joe Webb had the same to do so, I think they would look a lot better than they did in the preseason. But the thing they did show us some things that we need to be concerned about down the long run. A, 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 a notable, a solid quarterback is going to have to be in the in the wings somewhere. Um starting either next year or as soon as you can make it happen. <clears throat> I got you. I got you. I missed your message. Let me make sure to get you uh, get your replay on that one, Ashmel. Uh, in about less than five minutes, so we're going to get ready to start winding it down. Let me go ahead and make sure that, you know, your, your, your super saucy super chat message gets played. Um, but again, like I say, Webb having Webb as a third string guy, that's, that's where the love lies. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, because, and again, you know, with the, the quality of receivers that he played with, but I, then early in that first game, there were a couple of times that Webb showed me he was a little bit uh, less accurate than Whedon because he had some, some nice opportunity to connect with guys and he just couldn't quite put it there. But it, when it seems like the pressure rises, it seems like that's when he starts to kind of show up. But fortunately – we won't be going into the season with a kicker like Nick Rose because uh, Nick Rose don't make those. I didn't realize Nick Rose was the, the, the weird hair kicker from Texas. Like, I knew he was from Texas, but I didn't realize that was him, the dude that had the little the little weird comb-over shit going on. Uh, yeah, we should have never entertained that dude in the first place because that dude, is he's, he's, he's just been strange. I'm trying to see if it'll let me pick it up. It's not letting me... Uh, Boot the jigger up so I can replay your your dilly dally there, ass mail. Um, but if it don't come up, I'll make sure to get you. But we will have the post game show immediately. Immediately. Cowgirls, they got male <laughs> dancers. <laughs> they got no. Nah, don't tell me the Cowboys uh, went and got male dancers too. I know New Orleans had them hoes, but if they did, that's awful. Dog. That's awful. That's that's shenanigans and, and tomfoolery to the, to the umpteenth power. But yeah, for some reason it's not letting me uh, boot it up. But this is what we'll do. Like I said, I'll make sure I get you. Oh, here we go. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see which one was the second or last one. And uh, after this, we'll wrap it up. But again, like I say, immediately after the game, we will have the post game show. And Wink. Then, uh, Can't wait for you to eat crow on Hickens. So we can. Y'all be there so we can sing happy birthday to Wise. You know what I'm saying? If he ain't got too loaded, you know what I'm saying, after the after the game, you know, he you know, he he didn't turn into a grown man and all that, you know what I'm saying? So uh he might be he might be too turned up to join us. But um I wanna say I appreciate y'all. I know like I say this was a quick sauce, because like I said, it ain't really just a whole lot. We know that most of the starters aren't gonna play the first string ain't gonna play. It's just gonna be a situation where we're seeing who will be available and then like I say we're gonna start seeing what that fifty three man roster looks like because I think they have until Saturday, like midday Saturday to get that done. And we'll be looking at our 2018 Houston Texans team. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. So I hope y'all just as excited. Appreciate everybody who showed some of this super saucy, super chat love. Uh, Wink Wise, y'all got anything y'all want to say before we get up out of here? Oh, man, just shout out to everybody for the quick sauce. Uh, let's go ahead and hope we can see some good shit come out of this game. And uh, hopefully we can see some solid dip that uh, just been – Played by bad play throughout the rest of these last three games. And I want to say shout out to everybody. Thank y'all for coming through real fast. I know it's a short show, but we appreciate y'all. Appreciate all y'all coming through. Um, y'all make sure y'all watch that game. Y'all look at one of these, at all these guys, because one of them can be a star or a guy that's going to make an impact on this roster this season. So be on the lookout for some of those players tonight and just kind of pay attention because we're going to throw some sauce facts at y'all in a post-game stream. So y'all keep staying tuned. Y'all support the sauce. Exactly, exactly. I know people ask me when we go live during the game. I don't know about that, but I will jump on halftime, not on YouTube, but on the gram. So follow at Sauce Sports HTX on the gram. Uh, and on Twitter, it's the same goddamn thing. So it's super easy. And shit, it's right there on the damn little bar. So y'all don't ask how to spell it because it's right there in your face. Uh, hit the description links below. Go show Y some love. Go show Wink some love. Third Coast Sports TV uh, down in the description below. Go hit that subscribe. Go show a whole round table, love, man. All the links down there. So ain't no excuse why you're not subscribed to those channels, man. But with that being said, man, it's game time. We finna get up out of here. Appreciate each and every one of y'all, man. And we'll see y'all immediately after the game. Sauce line will be open for your calls, text. So if y'all fired up, wired up, or got something to say, man, hey, y'all already know the number. With that being said, y'all be cool like y'all be cool. Y'all the freshest motherfucking ingredients in the world. Stay saucy and we out.